The SS Tidal, the Hoenn region's premier ocean liner that has its own overworld cutscene. What? what? Yes, all that stuff going on in Slateport City actually goes somewhere by the end of the game. Now that Team Magma and or Team Aqua are out of the way, everyone's able to move forward with their plans and that includes finishing this big ol' ship. Captain Stern is even there to see us off and lets us know it's all thanks to Mr. Briny everything was able to come together. This is meant to be the means through which we access the Battle Tower or Battle Frontier in Pokemon Emerald, but you can also travel from Slateport to Lily Cove and vice versa. If you take that long route from Slateport to Lily Cove, you can spend time exploring and meeting other passengers on the ship. If you head to one of the windows in the back and interact with it, you'll get a view of the ship as it speeds across the water, passing rocks, shores, and even some trainers. I just love how these Pokemon games took advantage of things like this. Sure, we had seen transitions like it in the past when taking larger vehicles from one location to another, but to include a little optional view like this that could honestly be pretty easily missed helps to really make the world feel alive and make our travel a little less claustrophobic. Though we can really only see it during the first leg of the journey, it really helps to move along the time counter toward arriving at our destination. As mentioned, Mr. Briny and Hero are just having a good time. Briny is now Captain Briny, saying he's basically come out of retirement after seeing the magnificent vessel. I really do like how important of a character he is and how the progression of a game really works in a natural way to include him. When we first meet him, he's just an old guy who's been caught up in the evil team shenanigans with his beloved Pokemon being held hostage. Naturally, we rescue Pico because that also happens to line up with our other interests, notably those of the Devon Corporation. And from here on out, Mr. Brownie becomes our friend, bringing us to Duford Town on more business and eventually Slateport City, from which we can access the rest of the region. I've just always liked this dude. While we later get the HM for Surf and can travel across water by ourselves, I still think it's cool that he comes back for one more big ocean adventure. The SS title is quite the upgrade, too. There's some amazing artwork drawn by Ken Sugimori for the trading card game that depicts him on his original boat with Pico flying in the foreground, and I never really thought about how small the boat actually is. I guess I never really had the time to because of how it speeds from Petalburg to Duford in nothing flat. But here on the SS title, there isn't all that much. We can really only explore the cabin level and then one more below that. But I think it's pretty cool that this is basically the same layout as the abandoned ship that we could explore earlier in the game. Except it's, you know, actually functional. Thankfully, each room has a trainer inside who is eager to battle. They're all at some decent levels for where you might be at this point in the game, though none of them are all that difficult to conquer. It's a good way to pass the time and gain some experience. There's this one guy who has a team full of five Skitty and one Del Caddy. Uh, geez, man, I, I get it. I, I like the funny little cat too, but this is just excessive. I went ahead and checked every trash can in the rooms here, but didn't find anything cool. There is one suspicious looking dweeb who gives us a TM, insisting that he didn't steal it. It's the TM for Snatch, so I'm not inclined to believe him. On the lower level, we got some of these sailors pacing around the storage container, so it's time to go all stealthy and sneak around them. And in the very back of the room, there's a trash can with something actually inside it. The Leftovers. Finally, one of the best items ever made. Though maybe it's not such a good idea to be getting them from a trash can below deck. While this isn't the first time we've seen them in the trash, that would be in Pokemon Gold and Silver, it is a little odd that this is a theme for one of the staple items of the franchise moving forward. Literally garbage. Well, now that I've stolen some half-eaten food, better get back up to my room. Wait, wait, no, no, no! Oh look, we arrived. Yep, that was pretty much all there is to the SS title. A fun time, and I'm glad there was something extra to do beyond just teleporting from one port to the destination. Again, Pokemon Gold and Silver did a good amount of things like this first, with how you're able to move around the cabin of the SS Aqua while it's on its voyage, but I'm glad we got to repeat this idea in the Hoenn games. Both of these are consolation after being left off of the SS Anne. Though, with the way things play out in the anime, I'm actually pretty glad I never stayed on it too long. I'd much rather have Captain Briny leading the way. As I mentioned, I think the SS title works the best because of the payoff it has to the characters and plot elements established earlier in the game. Literally, some of our first big missions lay the groundwork for what's to come. Rather than being some fancy part of cruise that we get tickets for or a means of accessing other regions, this is possible because of us as the protagonist. I really love when we're able to see the fruits of our labor in a Pokemon game just beyond our team growing stronger or the villains getting defeated. But even more than just being a way to reach the Battle Tower or the Battle Frontier, it also geniusly serves as a way to access various legendary Pokemon events. 
See, the reason we're able to board the ship for a normal voyage is because we obtained the SS ticket as a thanks after becoming the champion, but mystery gift distributions would feature various other tickets, which allowed the player to travel to mysterious islands. Though I don't have my own footage for these as the time window has long since closed on these promotions. The events themselves aside, I think that this is such a cool idea for how to handle them. It fits in so well with the ocean exploration of Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, while giving even more of a purpose to those previously mentioned characters and plot elements. Of course, I'll talk about these other events at a later time in some more detail when I'm able to revive them and experience them for myself, while also recording the whole thing from my own archive, so make sure to subscribe and stick around. There are other methods possible, though I'm gonna need some time and funds. So that's about all I got to say about the SS title. Legitimately, I think it is the best ship in all of Pokemon because of how it plays into the story as well as the post-game, which feels like an odd thing to say, but I mean if we had to rank all the ships, would I really be wrong? That cutscene I didn't even know about until recently is adding a lot of points and leaving everyone else in the wake. Things play out more or less the same way in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, aside from most of the event tickets, but I'm glad it was basically preserved otherwise. Actually, the layout of the cabins is different with there being a central hallway instead. Also, Drake is on board the first time you ride it, revealing some history between himself and Mr. Briny. That makes a lot of sense with how his design is meant to look like an old sailor. You can even chat with him a bit more at the bow of the ship, which is added here as well. I kind of wish we had gotten this portion of it in the original, but I guess in the 3DS games, this area was a substitute for the aerial view on the Game Boy Advance. You know, a way to make it feel like the ship is actually moving. So I think I'm fine with that compromise. We didn't see the SS title appear in the anime, with how things went in the Advanced series after the Hoenn League, but we did see Mr. Briny for a few episodes, though he doesn't have the same level of significance as he did in the video games, only bringing the main characters to Doofer Town and then leaving after that. So it's unfortunate we didn't get to see him come back there as well, but we do get a flashback and see that he was always hot. And now that's basically all there is to the SS title, so let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you have anything to add? Was there anything I missed? Or did I go overboard yapping about one of the random little moments in a Pokemon game for the millionth time? Anyway, I'm off to explore the oceans of the Hoenn region. Thank you to every channel member for your continued support, especially the great Gators. DeAndre, Viz, Justin R, Dartholomew, L Dashi, Switz Cheese, Lockadox, Caden Herb, Panchina USC, Leafy Lilith, Skyraker, Eevee, Victor Brian, Dijon, Matthew Kelly, Mushar Siddiqui, Jackson Prone, Gallantry, Gator Kid 509, TF, Cheeseburger Lasers, Math O'Clock 947, Nomad Nobi, Pastel Blood, Taijirai, Justin R, Volity, Cosmo Zero, Phantom, and Quago. If you would like to support, see your name here, get access to emotes for comments, live streams, and sometimes early videos, you can become a channel member today. You can also follow me on Twitter as well for more memes. Anyway, this is Gatorx, and I'll catch you all later. Poochie Ina! Beautifly. Shroomish. Torchic. Draco! Latios. Latios. Uh, no, uh, Corfish. Mudkip. Kecleon. Zigzagoon! Makahita! Wilmer. What's happening, Pikachu? Pikachu? Lotus. Tickle Pop. Blah, blah. Blaze again. Rated E for everyone.